This is a quick video for series reactions. Series reactions. Reactions. And we're going to do this for a batch reactor. Batch. And we're going to assume that it's constant volume. So that means the initial volume will always equal the final volume. Or the final volume, or the volume within the system at any time is always the initial volume. So let's say we have A, and A can go to B, and it is governed by K1. So the reaction rate of A going to B is governed by K1. However, B will go to C. B will go to C. This is K2. So B going to C is governed by K2. So if we initially have, we initially have the concentrations versus time, we initially have some concentration of A right here. So as we just let the as we just put the stuff into the vessel and just leave it there, we can see that the concentration of A will just decrease. Just decrease and plummet down. So if it just sits there forever, we would also see that assuming that these reaction rates aren't too far off, that they're not one is like ten or twenty thousand times bigger than the other, just they're not they're about the same, roughly the same. We would see that we'd get B produced. So B would start being produced because A is going to B. So we get some B like that. However, B is going to C, so once we start getting some B, so this is A, that's B, so let's say that's B. Once we start getting some B, we also get some C. And what we see is as B produces, we get more and more C until at the final time we get all C. So A and B both go to zero as the time just keeps on going that way. But we get our greatest concentration of B right here. So we're going to call that T max. T max. And we want to find out what T max is. How long do we want to leave these chemicals in the batch reactor? So to do that, let's just do a basic mole balance around A. So we know the change in the moles of A with respect to time is equal to the reaction rate times the volume. Reaction rate of A times the volume. So if the volume is constant, we can just move this V over here, and then N, the moles divided by the volume, is just a concentration. So then what we get is we get DCA over DT is equal to RA. Now the reaction rate of A, the negative reaction rate of A, is equal to K1 times concentration of A. So now if we just make this positive and make this negative by both by applying negative 1 to both sides, then we can plug this into there. So what we then get, we then get DCA, the concentration of A, the change in the concentration of A with respect to time is equal to a negative K1 times the concentration of A. So now if we do a little bit of rearranging by moving CA1, CA over here and DT over here, we get the, con the change in the concentration of A over the concentration of A is equal to a negative K1 dt. So now if we integrate both sides of the equation, what we get is the natural log of the concentration of A divided by the concentration of A naught is equal to a negative K1 times the time, times t. So now if we solve for the concentration of A, we get the concentration of A is equal to the initial concentration of A times e to the power of a negative k1t. So this is the concentration of A into the system at any time. So let's just plug this up over here. I'll put this up over here. So the concentration of A is equal to the initial concentration of A times e to the negative power k1 times the time. So that's the concentration of A. Next we want to find the concentration of B. So we're going to basically do the exact same thing. Alright, now let's find the concentration of B. So before we even do that, let's just find the reaction rate of B. So RB is equal to a negative RA minus RC. So RA, the reaction rate of A, is producing B. So the negative reaction rate of A will be giving us the generation of B. And we subtract the, the production of C because B is going to C. So if we now plug that in, what we get is we get the concentration where we now where we just plug in the rate reactions, we get K1 times the concentration of A minus K2 times the concentration of B. So for a constant volume system, that means that this is DCB over DT. DT. 
So now if we do a little bit of rearranging, we get DCB, the change in concentration of B with respect to time, plus K2, so all we did was move K2 over here, times concentration of B, concentration of B is equal to K1 times concentration of A. So now what we want to do is we want to plug this in for the concentration of A. So we're going to plug this in right there. So what we get then if we plug that in is we get DCB over DT plus K2, oops, plus K2 times the concentration of B is equal to K1 times the initial concentration of A times E to the power of a negative K1 times time. So now if we integrate this, and it's a difficult integration, if you, you might want to use polymath or Wolfram Alpha, but if you integrate this and solve for B, we get the concentration of B is equal to K1 times the concentration of A naught times e to the power of a negative k1 times time minus e to the power of a negative k2 times time all divided by k2 k2 minus k1 so that is how we find the concentration of b so the concentration of b is just equal to that so k1 times concentration of a initially all divided by k2 minus k1 times e to the negative k1 times time minus e to the negative k2 times time and again that will give us the concentration of B so and again the concentration of B right there so now if we do a mole balance around the system it must equal Z because the the moles are not disappearing nothing's disappearing so that must equal the initial moles of A minus the final moles of A, minus the moles of B, minus the moles of C. So that's the mole bounce around the entire system. If we move this over here, we get the moles of C is equal to the initial moles of A, minus the initial moles of, or the final moles of A, minus the moles of B. Now since this system is constant volume, all we have to do is divide everything by V. V. And what that gives us is the concentration of C is equal to the initial concentration of A, initial concentration of A, minus the concentration of A, minus the concentration of B. So we don't need any of these ugly equations to find the concentration of C. We can just use a simple mole balance to find it. So what we really want to find is the maximum time we want these, these chemicals in the reactor. And what we see is the greatest concentration of B occurs when there is a tangent line that has a slope of zero. A slope of zero. So that means the change in the concentration of B with respect to time, dt, must equal zero to get the greatest concentration of B. So all we have to do is differentiate this equation. So if we differentiate that equation, what we get is we get the maximum time, t max, is equal to 1 over k2 minus k1 times the natural log of k2 over k1 and that will give us the t max and again all we did to get this was integrate or not integrate but differentiate this equation so if you just take the derivative of this equation with respect to time make it equal to zero you'll get T max so to find this concentration all we have to do is plug in T max right here so if we put T max right there and right there we'll get the concentration of B right there so that will give us the concentration of B concentration of A well we just have to plug in T max for that so we just plug in T max for T right there so that will give us the concentration of A. And to find the concentration of C, well, we just did what we initially, what we did a little bit earlier. We get the concentration of C is equal to the initial concentration of A minus the concentration of A final minus the concentration of B. So we know, what, we know what the concentration of A is, we know what the concentration of B is, and we know what the initial concentration of A was. So then we can solve for the concentration of C. And with that, we can find the overall selectivity 
because that is equal to the concentration of B divided by the concentration of C, that's BC, and we can find the overall yield of B because that's equal to the concentration of B divided by the change in the concentration of A. So A initially minus final concentration of A. And that will give us our overall yield. So that is how you get the best selectivity and yield for a series reaction in a batch reactor that has constant volume and constant temperature and constant pressure, but it's for a liquid phase so that doesn't really matter.